Um, hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and salam alaikum for everyone in the different places in the world. This is so amazing to have so many different people here from so many different places in this world, shows, showing that our community is growing and uh, we're spreading around. So welcome, everyone. Um, my name is Zainab Dada. I work uh, with Jambi Health Systems. I'm volunteering here in the OpenMRS Academy. Actually, Jambi was one of the first partners who decided to do an academy. We conducted an academy, we facilitated academy in Mozambique, uh, personal, well, it was a bit of hybrid because it was during COVID time. And since then, we have been having this dream of um, doing more of these sessions because we've been receiving so many good feedback about having an academy where everyone in any place of the world could attend and see what exactly is the open MRS and getting this opportunity of uh, interact with any other uh, users and implementers and developers across the world. Uh, Joshua, I didn't ask, but my voice is clear, right? It is very clear. Thank you, thank you. All right, so let's start with this session one, um, which is a challenge for me because I'm starting this. <laughs> we will talk a little bit about introduction to health, IT, global goods, and EMRs. Um, Jen, can you please go to the next slide? Okay, so what do we expect to accomplish with this session? Um, I have been going through the Mentiman and I've already seen there some of the responses to these questions. Uh, we know that uh, for some of you, at least for the introductions that I saw, we have a different, uh, different um, type of people participating in this session. We have people who might be the very first time, but we also have people who have been working with this uh, OpenMRS for long. But there's always some terms and concepts that we forget you during the time when we're busy doing our work. Um, so some of the concepts that we would like to accomplish by the end of this session are health IT, health information systems, global goods, global goods and electronic medical record systems. We will go over this, each one of these terms and try to better identify or better define what each one means. Uh, we will also try to better understand how uh, EMR fits in the health information system architecture. I also saw some questions about that. I mean, some uh, mentions on the Mentiman Met meter. Um, and at the end of the session, we will also be able to advocate for a list of advantages of the EMR for the health sector. Um, and we would like, we will be able also to summarize some benefits and trade-offs of using open source global goods to solve some of the problems and challenges that we have been having in management with the health information, because we know how much uh, had it can be managing all this bunch of information related to health that we have around. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's start with the very first one. Health IT. What is health IT? Health information technology. Health information technology, it usually refers to some electronic systems that uh, are used for um, healthcare providers, but it's also increasing now into be used by patients. I know in some countries, this is still a dream, but we going through that. So it's, it's used specifically uh, in, in many countries where it's been implemented by the care providers. They used to store, to share and analyze information related to the health uh, and also um, health management information. We know how tricky can be to manage all the information from the patient charts. We'll see later on this presentation how the information can be organized in the better way and accessible way. So what we are saying is that we use the equipment such as computers or other devices. Many of the systems that we have now can already be used in in the um, uh, tablets or even smartphones. And we use these devices, we use hardware, software, or infrastructure to record, store, protect. So we also looking forward to data security and protection and retrieve clinical, administrative, or financial information. 
So health information technology also supports the management and the security ex and secure exchange of the health information between the, the different uh, stakeholders, like different actors within the uh, Ministry of Health, including the final consumers the ones who do the decision makers for the policies and also healthcare providers. This is very important tool and it's been proven to support a lot in decision making in many countries. Next slide, please. So let's start to list some advantages. Uh, we heard that people are looking to know better about what is an advantage to have a health information system in place. So the use of a health information technology through electronic medical records, it will help you not only increasing productivity in healthcare and treatment, like care and treatment for patients, but also to speed up transactions between the patients and the healthcare providers. We know how huge are the health facilities that we have around. Papers always uh, fly around in these uh, uh, providers rooms, but if you have a system in place where you can have access to the data, it's, it, it reduces the burden on the providers also. It also improves the healthcare quality because we have access to the information, nothing gets lost. Increase healthcare accuracy. We know exactly what kind of treatment, what kind of healthcare and treatment we're providing to the, to the, to the patients. It prevents also medical errors and improve increasingly the administrative and processes that we have through this, uh, this process, decreasing paperwork and bureaucratic processes. So having um, everything on one place with, the access, with, the, with good access, it will help a lot to have all that room filled of paperwork. I am so sorry, I don't have any pictures here, but you should have seen it. Anyone who works in the health facility or have been visited a health facility should be familiar with that archives that they have filled up of patient charts with all that paperwork that is so hard to find when you're looking for a patient. And this is what the health information technology will bring you. It's shortened this burden of having to work with paperwork. Next slide, please. So we all know that in health, patient charts and files are important, but this is where the provider ended, enters and we need data that is useful, not only for the patient care and treatment, but also for managing the process in, inside the health facility and at the district, province, and even at national level. So what are the information systems? Information systems are basically sets of components that acts in integrated manner. Um, I'm seeing some comments here, <laughs> but we will have opportunity to do some comments also. I don't want this to be just me talking. I will want you guys also to speak up and we'll have a mentee um, in a minute. So like I was saying, it's basically a set of components that acts in an integrated manner. There is a workflow that includes mechanisms that supports you or to helps you how to collect that information, how to process that information, also how to analyze that information, because it's not a matter of just collecting and processing, uh, processing data. You need also to analyze that kind of data and the transmission of this information needed in a timely manner. So we, we make sure that we have access to this information in, in the time that we need to have this information. That's why the reports are here. We'll talk about the reporting uh, module later and during this week, and you see how this reporting piece has been improving and supporting many of the decision-making for the Ministry of Health across the, the world. So ne next slide, please. So here's a brief uh, overview of what is an electronic medical record. Um, if anyone is familiar to a patient chart, you know that uh, it's been evolving also. It started to have like a blank page where the doctors will be writing everything, all the notes. And then many of the Ministry of Health decided to have more guided forms uh, for the patients. And that's exactly what we try to do with OpenMRS. It's bringing all the information that it's needed to follow up with the patient into a screen, well organized with all the information that it's needed to the, to the doctor and 
that will provide us more information to be analyzed later. Okay, so this is just a brief view. We will have time enough during the week to look at the OpenMRS um, more deeply and we'll see all and how all this functionality works in OpenMRS. Next slide, please. Okay, so health information systems is a set of components, like I said, that act in an integrated manner that supports, this is actually something said by someone at WHO. It's a very typical phrase that we use to explain what is um, health information systems. So a health information system is a set of components that act in an integrated manner through mechanism for collection, processing, analysis, and transmission of necessary and timely information for the implementation of decision-making processes in health system. So this is something that we will have to keep in mind if we want to advocate for implementation of an EMR. Electronic medical record system, it's a digital version of what is being developed in the paper-based form. So whatever the SI team or m &E team of uh, Ministry of Health developed in form of a paper, we digitalize this into a chart in uh, a system that are usually used in healthcare facilities by the providers. So there are some implementation and Jen will go over there uh, later. Uh, there are some implementation that is being doing still retrospectively uh, where you have data clerks um, entering this data based on the paper form, but there are also other implementations where the provider can have access directly to the system and enter all this information without using any paper ba paper work base. An EMR system contains medical and treatment history. We're talking here about everything that is the flow of current treatment for a patient, starting with registration, vitals, pharmacy, lab, uh, clinical care, psychosocial, you name it. Okay, Anything can be entered on the historical data for the, on the history of the patient. Uh, it's collected, managed, and used by arteries and health professionals. So we need to make sure, uh, or need to rephrase here, is that any data that enters in, in EAMR system is secured. And there are certain procedures that we'll see also later that helps to keep confidentiality and privacy of this information. Okay. Um, talking a little bit about global goods. We heard about global goods, but do we really know what is a global good? So we know that when back, back, back in maybe 2010 or even before that, we started to think about uh, technology. But we also have to think that technology can cost a lot and we need to bring something together that is useful for everyone in equally way. So global goods are digital health tools, which are open source softwares. And we'll go to explain, we'll explain later what is an open source software, have no barrier to access for services or available under content content licenses. So an open source software, you don't have to pay a license. They are supported by an anchor organization or a strong community. It has a clear governance structure. It has been deployed at a scale, like we just show, we just show you here, um, how OpenMRS is growing across the country, have been funded by multiple sources and are used across multiple countries and have been demonstrated effectiveness, are designed to be interoperable, and are on a continuum towards sustainability for the tool or service. Global goods have been considered to be one of the best choice for the LMIC, low and middle income country strategies, because of all the benefits that it can bring. Next slide. And what is an open source? So by now you might be in guessing what can be um, an open source. An open source, it's exactly that. It's open to anyone. <laughs> Next slide. Um, it's open to anyone. It's a software that it's open to everyone uh, for those who develop and can make source code freely available. Anyone else, anyone else can view, copy, learn from it, alter or share that code. It means that it's free. But it doesn't mean that 
the entire process of implementing an open source tool is for free. There is some cost associated. It is not, so when we say that open source software does not mean totally free of charge because each country will need to implement um, the open source tool in the way that it's more applicable for the country or for the, pro or for the program that is being installed like customization, deployment, maintenance, this thing of, these kind of things are not, are not for free. There is some investment that needs to be here. So there is some cost associated when we're talking about customizing, customizing, deploying, or maintaining an OpenMRS software. There is going to be a session during this week where we will be able to uh, talk a little bit about, more about this. Um, and sustainability, and how as a community, we can support each other, uh, making this more cost effective. Okay, next slide. So what we want to do is like as a community and as Jen has been advocating forever since I know her, <laughs> it's trying to bring it all together. What, we do, what do we mean about bringing it all together? We know there's been a lot of other implementations. Not only, OpenMRS is not the only tool available, but what we can do is we can bring all together, next slide please, into a way where we have all the information needed uh, together in one place. And that's, that's here where we talk about the global goods. So until recently, uh, we always used to look at um, OpenMRS for a long, long time and see a like a tool used only for HIV care and treatment. We've been proving that uh, OpenMRS is evolving during the years. And thanks to the large and strong community uh, that we have and all the inputs that we have for the very bright people that we have in this community, um, and it's currently been used in so many other areas, such as antenatal care. Recently, we had the COVID package, for example, for instance. And this is the way forward. Open MRS 3 is the way forward to have everything integrated on the same place. Hello. Um, Anthony, can you please mute yourself? Thank you. Uh, so this is a very comprehensive slide that we have here together, but it shows and gives you a brief idea of uh, the involvement of everyone in OpenMRS until the current O3 and how it's been integrator, integrated to the other existing systems, such as lab system, community health information system, pharmacy, health management, and logistics. So I believe that uh, we'll have more discussion around how we can integrate all these systems together, how we can integrate interoperability to, to integrate all these systems um, and make it work as one, like, like I said before, bringing, bringing it all together. Okay, next slide. Okay, so we've been hearing about EMR. I think that this brief, and it, it is very brief. We don't have much time, like, like Jen said, we could spend the entire day here talking about this. Um, but I would like to hear from you, and as uh, the mentee, um, Mentimeter that uh, we used before, where you can respond to these couple of questions that we have here. The first one is, I would like to hear from you guys, um, from the 147 participants that we have here, some advantages of implementing and using an EMR system. So if you could just go to the Menti and try to respond to this question. Uh, Jen already shared here the question. And if you go to the mentee, you'll see there the question also. And you can give us some advantages that you have in your mind of using uh, EMR system. Okay, so let's give it more five seconds to see more responses. Okay, convenient data sharing, minimize medical treatment errors, yes, for sure, transparent access control, 
centralized me medical records around the health facility, having access to the data, back data backup and recovery, yes, for sure. Improve quality of clinical care, longitudinal health record in one place, make organization of data for patient ease. Disaster recovering, yes, for sure. I can tell you that we had experience and we'll talk about that later. Storage and retrieval of healthcare, healthcare related information quickly and easily, for sure. Share the patient charts with doctors in other countries to offer consultations. Wow, that's a new one, other countries. Data sharing between the countries, sharing data, help building longitudinal record of the patients. It will help your know, free diagnosis, research and innovation, improve patient care, EMR providing immediate access to ex patient data, enabling more coordinated and efficient care, allowing healthcare providers to quickly review a patient's medical history and response. Convenient management. Wow, so many, so many. Because they are an electronic system, they have the space used for storing medical records. Yes, sometimes the health facility doesn't have all that space. <laughs> Duplicate minimization, yes. Improve patient safety, provide data for analysis, for sure. Okay. Transparency and resource allocation, clinical care and data quality. Right, digitalize paper-based forms and process for more productive, more control, and data privacy improve. Aggregation for data in EMR can be invaluable for medical research, for sure. Helping the development of new treatment and understanding health trends. Wow. Okay. This is awesome. So I think everyone Billing accuracy, yes, we will also talk about that. Interoperable data, improve health service quality, streamline health professional workflow. Wow. Right. So I think we're all on the same page. Um, but now that we talk about some advantage, can we go uh, one slide back, please? Or oh, after. Barriers. Let's talk about some barriers or challenges that we have. We know the benefits, we know the advantages. Let's think about some barriers and challenges that we have or we might have if you want to implement and use an EMR system in, a, in the country. Oh, how do we respond? There's a mentee uh, link if you can see, Aaron, if you can see the, the screen, there's a code, you can use the menti.com and use the code that is showing on the screen. Okay, so some of the barriers can be resistance to change, lack of infrastructure, cybersecurity, high implementation and maintenance cost of EMR system, initial cost of the infrastructure training needs for users, data privacy issues, um, interoperability issues, complying with laws. Yeah, that's a good one. Lack of basic IT skills by health workers. Yes, that's a, that's a, very, a big one, actually. Digital literacy stands as a barrier and causes poor adoption of uh, LMI settings. Yep. Insufficient financial resources. Lack of ICT knowledge among staff. Internet connectivity. Um, 
disaster recovery precautions should be taken in cyber attacks. Yep. Transition from paper-based system uh, to EMER requires training for healthcare professionals. Learning to navigate and effectively use the EMR system can be time consuming and may impact productivity. Yes, and especially if we're talking about low income, low and medium income countries uh, where we have not enough staff, staff bring them to this uh, training, it's always a barrier, yeah, a challenge. Change resistance, yes. Disaster recovery precautions, getting skills is not easy. The challenge is when it's not fully implemented and some facilities are using EMR and some are not. Do we might I think we have a lot of countries that this is happening that cause differences and difficulties in assessing the data quality and for reporting also. Some governments may not be willing to in invest in EMR systems, possibly due to the cost priorities, etc. Okay, so if we see that we have, uh, can you, we can see here that we had a lot of uh, advantages, but there's also some disadvantages or barriers that we can face um, when we want to implement um, EMR system. Thank you so much for all these questions, all these responses. I mean, this is awesome and it will help us a lot to better um, understand your concerns. Jen, can we go back to the slides, please? <clears throat> so you guys mentioned most of my, my slides here. You already give us um, all the answers that I had here. So some of, the, some of the advantages that I had listed here is provide comprehensive information used to provide patient care in a simpler and faster way. Clinical information maintaining safe, safety during a natural disaster, for example, and these happen in many African countries. Um, in Mozambique was a, an example uh, that uh, there was a natural disaster and there was most of the paperwork was destroyed. But fortunately, we had some backups uh, of the forms that had been introduced in, a, in the OpenMRS and we could recover all that data. Um, electronic communication is done safely between healthcare professional and patients, instant access to patient information. So many of these have been mentioned by, uh, by you on the mentee. Next slide, please. Um, computerized administration process, such as appointment scheduling and payments. Someone mentioned about billing. So yeah, this is also possible with an EMR. It allows to reduce diagnostic errors. This was also mentioned to the lack of the information because you have all the information available on the system. So it's there, it's, it reduces the errors that the, the providers could be doing. <clears throat> it also allows to reduce the waiting time of patient in health facility. So having the information accessible and for those who works in the, with the health facilities know that sometimes only looking for the results of the, of the lab or um, a pharmacy prescription might take longer and it will increase the line in the registration, for example, because that patient is waiting to have all this process, all these files together. Um, and with the EMR, it's easier. You have all the information uh, available. It, all, it allows to standardize the process and procedures and increase productivity in healthcare and treatment. Next slide, please. The possibly, possibility of making patient data available to other health professionals for follow-up, specifically when we're talking about transfer. So there are services that have not been provided in one health facility. I want to transfer my patient to the other health facility. Having data uh, available in the, in the EMR, it's easy to have access to the data if the patient is transferred. Also, uh, if we're talking about trans silent transfers, for example, it also allows the administration to obtain billing data. We also mentioned that before. The doctor can observe the evolution of the treatment's effectiveness, um, usually, especially talking about patients who need canon treatment continuously, like HIV patient. It's very important because it can be also another doctor that comes to observe that patient, and you'll have the entire history of the patient in front of him without having to go and look in the paper-based uh, information. Uh, the nurse can report the adverse reactions of the meds, an investigator can anal analyze the effectiveness of drugs and patients with comorbidities. 
Um, and there's also a sentence that was taken from one of the literature that we have. If each of these professional works along with the data, each one will have an incomplete view of the patient's condition. So if we all work together, if we have all the information of the patient together in one place, you'll have a better understanding of this patient's status. But you also mentioned some barriers or challenges that we can face uh, when, want, when you want to implement or use a EMR system. And human resources, that's clear, especially if we're talking about low to medium income countries um, where the staff is scarce at the health facility level. This is, all, this is gonna be a barrier. Limited internet connectivity. We have health facilities that are located in such a place where the connectivity is not even reaching there. The cost uh, related to the infrastructure, uh, we know we're talking about servers, computers, power backups, and constant electricity supply, network devices, so equipment, infrastructure, it's costly. Yes, that's true. Um, high level of effort of training. You guys also mentioned this one uh, and continuous training because it's not only one stop training that the, the staff will do and you'll just leave them to work by himself because these technologies are also evolving and people need to be aware of the improvements that uh, have been happening with these EM EMR systems. Privacy and security concerns. Someone also mentioned that. Um, Temporary loss of productivity in the clinic during the adoption phase of EMR. There are some issues um, about the change management and social barriers also. So resistance to change at the health facility from the staff, it will also happen. Uh, the introduction of the new electronic tools is seen as more work for health staff. Uh, health staff replaces manual work. So people are used to do what they know to do, how to do. And these changes might be a barrier also. Um, there are some activities that can be done to prevent that uh, for sure. And I think that like Chen said, this is not gonna be enough <laughs> to talk about all this. Um, but I'm so happy that you guys were able to list here some of the advantage and the barrier, barriers that we can face. Because from now on, for the rest of the, the, the days that we have ahead, we'll be able to better understand how we can make this happen. I will stop here, uh, if you go to next step, next slide. And thank you everyone uh, for being active and uh, participate on the Menti and wish you a very good session for the rest of the week. Thank you everyone, back to you, Joshua.